So anybody seen pop outs? It is a deleterious. You know, that's that term deleterious. That's uh, a deleterious is for lack of a better term, it's bad rock, soft rock. So that's your iron stones, clay stones, sandstones, your church. Some of your church, some churches are hard, some aren't. Um, a rock that is porous. So it's freeze thaw related. So this says soft aggregate. Um, it's in quotation marks because it's not spongy soft. It just means that it's porous. Aggregates that can absorb water. And as that absorbs water, Again, during the freeze thaw, when that freezes, it pops. And typically it happens near the surface. If that is deep inside the concrete and that rock is deep inside the concrete, it's not destroying the concrete. The concrete around, of it, around it is holding it together. If we've, got to, if, we've got, if, if we've got durable concrete. If it's up on the surface, there's no strength on the surface to hold it, so it pops off the surface. We see that rock, as we see, this is you know, dug, digging out, but typically when you look at a pop-out, you're going to see only part of that rock or none of that rock there because it's going to deteriorate, okay? And that's a telltale sign is that that rock has been busted off. Very, very often mortar liftoff is considered to be pop-outs. We've had people who've said, come look at your pop-outs and um, it turns out to be mortar liftoff. The difference is that would be um, where this is all disappears. That's that would be uh, a pop out, more a lift off. The rock will still be intact. Okay, so what's happening on mortar liftoff is the mortar over top of the little aggregate particle is disappearing. Um, it's freeze thaw damage. It's always freeze thaw related. So hopefully we're not power trawling. So let's assume broom finish on this. So again, it's freeze thaw related. Okay. Um, and 100% of the time, it's either lack of curing or overworking the surface. What about the dust, the aggregates? No. No, I, I, it's not related to the aggregate bond. I mean, it does have an impact on it, but it's not entirely caused because of a coating on the aggregate particles. Okay? So, what's happening with mortar liftoff is We'll exaggerate this a little bit so we can see it. We have our aggregate particle and after a winter freeze thaw has forced this little piece off the top of the aggregate particle. And we go back to our picture, often we have a lot of these over top of a slab to the point where some have called it scaling, but it's not scaling. Okay, what's happening with this is, as water, we go back to our discussion of delaminations, water is migrating to the surface. Okay, this surface is rapidly dehydrating. As water's coming from the bottom, it's replenishing that water on the surface, which prevents that surface from dehydrating. So we can continue to hydrate, continuing to build strength. What happens with mortar liftoff is water hits this rock and is forced to go around the rock because it can't go through the rock. So we end up with this area here, which is not hydrated from below. And so because it's not hydrated from below, it dehydrates, right? It dries out and it doesn't get, we don't get the same strength on that mortar above that rock. And because we don't get that strength, it ends up being porous. So the surface over top of that rock ends up being porous. That saturates with water. During the freezing, that expands, that water expands, pops it off and we see that rock. Okay? And so the surface above the rock is not fully hydrated. We haven't got the potential strength of that, that paste above that rock. That's with mortar lift or scaling? That's mortar lift off. So what's the difference between that and scaling? Scaling will, will happen over top of the whole area. 
So instead of it just, mortar liftoff is just above the rock. Scaling is that we have our rocks. This is all dissipating, right? Even the pace between the rocks is dissipating, so it's coming off, okay? Causes are very similar, generally speaking, but mortar liftoff is, is extremely specific. Right, if, if, if this area, if you have another rock here, and that's failed, but this area in between is good, then we know that if it was pro allowed to properly hydrate this surface, we have the durability. So it's just between those two points, which always points to lack of curing. So if this had been cured, we wouldn't have had the risk. Right, the problem, the problem would have went away. If we would have cured that surface, held that moisture under, applied extra moisture to the surface, we would have got to the strength above the mortar. Or if we overworked the surface or work with bleed water into the surface, again, if we work bleed water back into that surface, we're decreasing the, the, um, we're decreasing the strength by increasing the water cement ratio on the surface. By increasing the water cement ratio on the surface, we're decreasing that strength. So we've decreased the strength here, and the strength here, the fact is, is that because this hasn't been hydrated properly, again, it's going to pop off. Again, just pushes us, um, ensures that we are uh, properly curing, and that we're not overworking the concrete, especially on high slump. When we overwork it, we're pushing those rocks down further. The further they are, in this case, it's still not, it's not, still not hydrating above it, it exaggerates that. So if we have a rock close to the surface, this is the surface again, we have a rock really close to the surface, we can see that rock but it doesn't really look that bad. The deeper those rocks are on the surface, the deeper those mor that mortar lift off is, the, the more visible it becomes. Okay?